Hi, my name is Lexi Underwood and I play Ella in the new series, Just Beyond. I'm R.L. Stein. Hi, I'm Gabriel Bateman. I'm Seth Graham Smith. Hi, I'm Megan Stott. Hey, my name is Cedric Joe and I play Sam in the new series, Just Beyond. Hey, I'm Jai Pershkolnik and I'm hanging with J14. Well, I mean, I, you know, somebody came to my office holding a copy of a graphic novel and said, hey, what do you think of, you know, doing this R.L. Stein graphic novel as a TV series? And that was immediately intriguing, you know, just um, because of the R.L. Stein of it all. And also because the idea of doing a, an anthology series where you get to tell a different story every episode and you don't have to worry about, you know, season arcs or character growth or, you know, multi-season arcs. I mean, you know, the stuff that you have to think about in almost any other television show. So it just seemed like a lot of fun and it, it turned out to be a lot of fun. My character is Jack, who is a teenage boy who's going through puberty and is uh, starting to feel more and more like less related to his parents. And then as the episode goes on, that kind of gets more and more extreme. And he thinks that his parents may not actually be human or his parents at all. So he he kind of gets terrified and starts to go on a, a journey of discovery to try to find out like what's going on with his parents and if they're his real parents. I play Luna in episode three, Witch Witch. Uh, pretty much what happens, my cousin uh, Fiona, who's played by the beautiful and talented Rachel Marsh, she's um, not really embracing her witch heritage. She gets bullied for it a lot at school and her world is kind of turned upside down when her cousin Luna literally comes in on a tornado and is just staying with her for a few weeks. Luna is very much a witch. She loves every part of her witch identity. She's got white spiky hair and purple eyes and the long nails. And um, she's kind of embarrassing to her cousin at school and the two kind of have to work together to embrace what makes them different. Oh my gosh, the whole thing was so exciting. Um, definitely becoming the character with hair and makeup and wardrobe and also taking on the accent. I spoke in the accent solidly for three weeks to the point that everybody on set thought I was actually British. So it was a pretty big shock when afterwards the cast and I all went out for pizza and I showed up and no one recognized me. So Olivia is basically, her parents are going through a divorce and uh, she has to move to this new state with her mom and this new house that has creaky floorboards and like flickering lights and she's not really comfortable and she has to make new friends and it's basically about her um, anxiety and her nervousness and basically overcoming that and having strength. So Sam is uh, he's a young boy dealing with uh, the loss of his father and with that he somehow ends up in an alternate universe so He's dealing with, he's griefing while he's trying to find a way back home. And while he's trying to find a way back home, he is also trying to deal with the death of his father. Um, that it is okay to be sad um, and it's, it's okay to be in pain uh, and it takes time to heal. 14 year old Ella, uh, she should be excited about her class field trip uh, to the legendary Fox Cedar, but unfortunately her ex-best friend Zoe will also be there. Um, and so they go to the theater, um, a tour guide tells them the tale of the 1938 fire that claimed the lives of an acting troupe in rehearsal. And um, they they have like this spooky legend that, uh, that the dead thespians are looking to pluck the living and drag them into their acting troupe. And so, when personal issues with Zoe sends Ella running off, Ella finds herself trapped in the theater um, overnight and in the middle of all this drama between the ghosts. And so throughout uh, this this story that we tell overnight of, of, a, um, of a haunted night at, at the Fox Theater, Ella learns, um, you know, the importance of forgiveness and to not let her circumstances define her. Uh, change is a big, big, big message in this episode. And so uh, she just really learns the importance of forgiveness and that at the end of the day, no matter how hard um, something may be or no matter how much pain it's bringing you, you also have to heal and you have to move on and you have to accept your fate um, to ultimately grow into the person that you want to be.
no, I guess I'd say just the intensity is really fun. Uh, it's I think it, you kind of feel more connected to a character after like going through the most intense possible emotions uh, and, and feeling like the most vulnerable part of a character. Also, a lot of the like uh, for Child's Play, I had a lot of harness work and uh, a lot of stunts, which was really fun for me. So anytime I get to do stunts, it's fun. Uh, I don't know if that's like specifically relating to horror, but yeah. It gets your adrenaline in rush. It, it, it really gets your adrenaline in rushing. I'm really into like the psychological thrillers. And so I love when uh, when a when a story will like throw me off and I think like, I absolutely know who the killer is or I absolutely know who the villain is. And it like goes in like a hundred other different possible routes. Um, so I, I love the adrenaline and I love uh, just the surprises and, and all the the excitement that horror has to bring. Not really. None that I can think of, to be honest. I think it was overall pretty, pretty fun and lighthearted. Yeah, I actually can't think of any scary moments, to be honest. I didn't really have anything scary happen, but I will say when I watched my episode, um, I actually did get scared and I did jump a few times, which I was actually kind of surprised for because I was like, this isn't scary to me. But then I watched it. I was like, actually, this is a little creepy. Okay. (laughs) Okay, so for scary, there were lots of scenes with bugs. Most of the time they were fake, but a few times they were real. The tarantula, everyone was real. Just be aware of that. Um, Funniest and embarrassing. Okay, I have a few. So I had these like super long talon-like nails and they would constantly pop off in takes. So we'd have to cut takes or stop them or afterwards I'd be like, okay, lost my right pinky, lost my left middle finger and they'd have to come back and put them on but i think that most challenging part about wearing those nails was that i could not get myself dressed if i needed to change once i was all already in hair and makeup so they had to have people help me get get dressed i mean the fox theater we actually filmed in the fox theater and there were a couple of night scenes and then especially when we get into like the second half of the episode into like all the creepy haunted demon skull stuff that in the fox theater with really dim lighting and smoke coming from the ground was terrifying within itself like especially when it's like 11 o'clock at night it just all of that combined i was terrified sometimes like I actually forgot I was filming uh so that was probably like the scariest part yeah it was a a scary I guess and a highly embarrassing moment for me um there was a a moment where now remember we had to wear face shields because of COVID so and when you're filming a horror thing you know usually you're in like a dark kind of set and you know there's moody lighting and things and this special effects people had strung these tiny like steel wires across the set to you know pull um lamps and things and make things move and to give you the impression of ghosts being there and i didn't know this and uh in the middle of a take i had to give uh i I wanted to go talk to an actor and so i ran out to go talk to the actor and just got clotheslined by one of these things and (laughs) right in front of the whole crew and and by the way not only did it leave a mark on my neck but i ripped the entire uh, special effect out of the wall. They had to stop, they had to reset everything. It was, it was very embarrassing. I get scared, but not really from movies or books. Uh, uh, I get scared from the day-to-day horror of real life uh, in a pandemic with two young children. That's, uh, That's terrifying to me. Nothing okay. scares me. I, there's something missing in my brain. And um, when I read a scary book or I go to a scary movie, I'm the one who's laughing. Horror makes me laugh. I never get scared. Hey, everyone. Tune in to Disney Plus on October 13th to watch our original series, Just Beyond. Just Beyond.